So this is Zora. She is a story of being bullied. Bullied and driven by her sister from the time she was a year old. And then bullied and driven by the two horses she's been with for the past year. And you know, horses, most of the time they bully and drive each other around. It's because they've had experiences that have made them afraid. And so this feedback loop just keeps going. So here we have Odelina, who even when she was in this field, Zora would not come into this paddock area or where you see Odelina because she was scared of Odelina in that field, which of course I had the gate closed. Odelina is very friendly towards Zora. I have had them in together for a little bit, a few hours. Odelina has not pinned her ears at Zora. She has not tried to drive her. She has stayed with her ears perked. She lets Zora come up to her. She lets Zora pin her ears at her. She doesn't chase her, drive her, pin her ears back, nothing. She clearly wants to be friends with Zora, but Zora is stuck in her old story. So Zora has asked for some help from my friend Jen, who is a Reiki master and energy healer. And Jen is clinically blind, but she sees energy stronger than, I mean, I feel like I'm blind when I'm next to her. And uh, let's see what happens with Jen and Zora. So what, what are you getting from Zora? She feels like she's being, she's no longer number one, that she's second, that she's gonna be left behind. And this is something that comes from her, not just by being here, because I don't believe that, you know, you've ever made her actually feel that way. What's happened is that we've triggered, um, triggered a memory and an emotion where in the past that she's felt like, I don't know, uh, yes, where she's felt that basically alone and unwanted um, when she came here she uh, yeah, this is on film right sweet pea um, she she didn't have that she was she was number one she had exactly what she'd been hoping for a person to herself mm. um, can she learn to share of course she can we just have to work on it Removing the blockage um, where it's at, and, uh, so that she could be open to know it and to trust it. That she's not necessarily forgotten as her family grows. She's not going to be cast to the side and more attention given elsewhere because she's not good enough or she's not, you know, you're energetically not attracted to her enough. Um, it's, she's going to understand. It's okay and that there's equal balance and that doesn't mean her connection is any less than your connection with other beings so. and does she have anything to say about the fact that she's the one who told me to go and get these other horses maybe this is her way of healing the right. final piece to her open complete openness yeah Um, she says that she can be very closed off to other people as well, so there's a balance there, right? She wants you to be closed off to other animals. Not really, but you know, that emotion's coming forward. But she's also not as open to everybody else. And that was her past speaking. It wasn't, it wasn't her soul speaking. It's just a learned emotion. Basically, when you feel abandoned and forgotten and unwanted, when somebody gives you that attention, you hold on to it, you grab onto everything. We're just going to discuss for not losing that connection. If anything, it's going to grow and she's going to relate. So what I'm doing is I'm just scanning right now to feel where it is in her body that she's decided to put this.
I know why the other horses triggered it. Um, she's never had the same fr these freedoms that she's had here, and that's um, that's why some of the baggage and insecurities that she had from her previous life had come forward. But when you the mixture of new energies and new beings and the res emotional responses that they have in connection with you brought up being in a being in a smaller paddock um, which felt where her emotions kind of start where she was it she wasn't she was the main she was nobody's number one mm. she was loved but she never was allowed to have that connection and um, that's why she's like kind of upset right now is just focusing on communicating it with her as I push energy into her body like she was holding some of it through her into her lumbar but now we're just kind of working with uh, the horse's heart chakra to get her to open up and I'm just waiting for the grid to kind of light up that shows me that she's actually starting to move through she's shown some signs of moving through outside of her moving around and wanting me to provide what she instinctively needs right now is that certain amount of touch um, at her back end mm -hmm. that's just more of that's just instinct and that's why I backs away from her so that she knew that I, I wasn't playing into that part of it like I was here we were here to do this and that I wasn't just going to listen to what she wants in this moment like she wants both but you know So as I was walking away from her, um, and I knew that, I remember this when uh, I first met Zora, and I, I call it selfish behavior because it's all about what they want. Mm. There's no no equal balance to it, a give and take per se. And when I started to walk away with her, it was my way of working with her that I didn't want to be rubbed on and I didn't want her to stick her bum in me. I wanted her to focus on what we needed to do. So as I was walking away, I, the invite for her to come up and be and just stand there with me. This is two days after Zora's session with Jen and I put her in with Odalina about 10 minutes ago. Before, if she was put in with Odalina, she would go and stand all the way at the back there and refuse to come up for food or water. That is amazing that Zora didn't run away there. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. She's made such amazing progress. It's insane. And she's drinking. When we had her in before, she refused to eat or drink. Just stayed way down there at the back of the field. What a healing. 
What a beautiful transformation. Thank you.